first model I want to look at is Bingham plastic. Now, laminar flow is described using the following equation. Tau equals YP plus PV times gamma. So, you can see PV multiplied by gamma, that's determining the slope of the line in the same way as that would be YP plus PV is your function that you're applying to your shear rate to get your shear stress. Now PV determines the slope of the line, YP is something that you add to that line which basically raises the, raises the line up on the graph. I'll show you this on graphically in a second. Just to explain what tau is. Tau is measured, measured shear stress in pound per hundred square feet and YP or yield point it's basically the yield point in pounds per hundred, per hundred square feet. Usually, these are the usual units, the API units, I'm quoting here. PV's plastic viscosity. Um, it's usually uh, in units of centipoises, which I've mentioned before. And the shear rate is in per seconds. As I showed you before, because it's the uh, uh, change in, the, the difference in velocity between the two, two planes of fluid or two uh, pl two plates of glass, if you like, with a fluid between them, or two actual laminar planes of fluid. Um, the difference in velocity divided by the distance between them, because it's a distance per unit time divided by a distance, you end up with a per unit time. So we've got shear rate is expressed in per seconds. So the values of PV and YP can actually be calculated using the following equations. PV is the uh, theta 600 minus the theta 300. Now these are your uh, rotational speeds of your fan rheometer as you, as you um, saw Hector um, when Hector was demonstrating the fan, fan, uh, the fan viscometer, fan rheometer, the, the, the real, rheological properties of the mud, he, he got a dial reading at 600 rpm and 300 rpm. So the PV is actually 600 minus 300. So whatever the values were there gives you your PV and PV as I said before is the slope of the line. And YP is uh, theta 300 minus a PV value, or it could also be expressed as two times the 300 value minus the 600 value. Either way, you end up with the yield point. And the yield point, as I said, it's, it's the thing that shifts the line up. If the YP was zero, then it would, that line would go straight through the origin and would be describing what's known as a Newtonian fluid, because we've got a straight line. PV is pretty much the viscosity of, the, of that fluid or the thickness of the fluid and the YP is the point at which it starts to move. If the YP is zero then the fluid is, uh, it starts to move as soon as you apply a, a shear stress to it, it starts, to, it, starts, it, starts motion, it starts moving, it starts shearing, it's, uh, it immediately has a shear rate as soon as you apply a shear stress. Now a yield point, it's why, the reason it's called a yield point is that you actually have to overcome in a Bingham plastic fluid, you have to overcome that YP before the fluid starts moving, and then once you've overcome it, it moves in a, it moves, it has a linear relationship between um, the shear stress and shear rate, and that linear relationship is determined by the, sl the PV, which is the slope of the uh, slope of the line. Now, as you can see, this model usually uh, this model actually o usually over predicts the yield stress or the shear stress at, at, z at zero shear rate by 40 to 90 percent. The reason it does this is because it's a straight line, it's not a curve. We know that at the lower, lower shear ra rates, the, the relationship is actually a curve for a non-Newtonian fluid. And the Bingham plastic law, the Bingham plastic model, does not take account of the lower shear rates. So when you're looking at your annular flow, it's just a projection straight through from your pipe flow here right down to the, the yield point. And the yield point is based on these shear rates, 300 and 600, which are high shear rates. And we know that for annular flow, we're, look, we're, we're wanting to look at low shear rates to, to correctly model this, uh, this area, which is actually a curve. So as I say, for annular hydraulics, Bingham's actually over, over predicting uh, your shear stresses at, at this zero shear rate or at low shear rates by somewhere between 40 and 90 percent, which is significant, really. How can we overcome this? Well, one way that we can overcome it is, uh, since it's overestimated by 40 to 90 percent, it's actually possible to calculate the low shear rate uh, yield point using this equation here, LSRYP, or low shear rate yield point, equals 2 times theta 3 minus theta 6. 
So that's your lower shear rates uh, as measured on the fan viscometer, um, fan rheometer. You've got 2 times theta 3 minus theta 6 as opposed to 2 times theta 300 minus theta 600. Um, so the, this can actually be substituted to modify Bingham and make it more realistic. So then you've got one line for your annulus, this, this blue dashed line, and another line for your pipe, which is the, the black line. Now that sounds all very well, but I haven't actually seen anywhere in any of our software we, where we can actually put in uh, theta 3 and theta 6 when we're actually selecting Bingham plastic. And I haven't seen it in anyone else's software either. So it all sounds very nice in principle to be able to do this, but we can't. So we're stuck with putting in your 300 and 600 readings, or usually the, the inputs that you're asked, asked for when you're doing Bingham plastic is just PV and YP. You're never asked for a low shear rate YP. Um, so what you end up with is you never actually end up with this line-to-line -line relationship, which is a reasonable approximation of annular hydraulics. It certainly is going to bring it down from a 90% overestimate to something a little bit more realistic. It's still not a curve. It's a line-to-line -line relationship. So even if we did have the possibility of doing that, it still wouldn't be accurate. But we don't even have that possibility in most software. So just uh, looking, at, looking at some actual figures here, just to, just to show you this. Um, if we're flowing at 450 gallons a minute in a 9.68 1-inch ID casing, around 5-inch OD pipe, the annular velocity in, in, in that... Uh, in that annulus around that pipe, assuming the pipe is concentric, the annular velocity or the average annular velocity would be 2.676 feet per second. So plug in 2.676 feet per second into this equation, which is your uh, shear rate at the, at the wall, or the, the uh, annular wall or the pipe wall. Um, we end up with a shear rate at the pipe wall it ends up being 82 per second. Now, traditional methods for only measuring the 300 RPM and the 600 RPM, giving you 511 per seconds and 1,022 per seconds, basically is a limited in accuracy because, as you can see, 511 per seconds is quite significantly higher than 82 per seconds. So you're looking at shear rates that are much higher than the actual shear rate at the pipe wall or the uh, or the annular wall. So it's a major limitation of the Bingham plastic model. So in summary, Bingham plastic is actually useful for modeling fluids such as toothpaste, not really for modeling fluids such as uh, mud, which we pump around well bores. It may actually give an accurate fit for the overall standpipe pressure in that you could actually use it to predict standpipe pressure and probably use it quite well. And it may give you a bang on standpipe pressure. But then when, if you're, it depends what you're really using the model for. If all you want to do is uh, estimate what the overall standpipe pressure in the system is, fine, Bingham might work. If you actually want to model what's going on in your annulus and whether you're going to get good hole cleaning and nice, uh, what, what the slip velocity is and uh, what, the flow what the flow behavior is um, and whether you're going to clean the hole, Bingham is pretty much useless because it's going to overestimate your ECD it's going to overestimate. It just it doesn't actually work in, in your annulus, really. So when you're when you're using a model for hole cleaning purposes, the model this model will not model annular behavior accurately, basically.